I'm Ben Averis. I'm a botanist and I live near Edinburgh. And I'm over here at Kindrogan Field Centre in Perthshire to do a two-day course teaching people about heaths and mires. And we're looking at heaths and mires through the medium of the National Vegetation Classification. Anybody just driving through this part of Perthshire will see there's a lot of heather on the hills. And um, when people think of heaths, heather is one of the things they think about. And... Uh, where the where there is so much of it, there's a pretty good chance that if you get in there and have a look around, you'll find that it's not all the same. It varies. There's a different, slightly different mix of species in one place compared with another, and um, it's those those differences, whether they be quite subtle or very marked, it's those differences that lead us to classify the vegetation from um, into different kinds of heathland communities. That's heaths, uh, as I say, most of them with a lot of heather. We have other dwarf shrubs, of course, that grow with the heather, things like bell heather and cross-leaved heath and blaeberry. Um, and these, all these dwarf shrubs grow not only in heaths, but they grow in some other habitats, for example, bogs. And that is why I thought it would be a good idea for this course to cover um, bogs and then some other wetlands as well to broaden it a bit because people look at some of our bogs and they see a lot of heather in them and they think maybe that's a heath uh, so the where people where where you draw the line between heath and bog is something that can be a bit uncertain in some people's minds and it's helpful to clarify that on this course so we do look at a lot of bogs um, as well as the heaths and then we extend from the bogs into other kinds of wetlands which don't have so much heather and dwarf shrubs in them, rushes and sedges with all kinds of mosses. Um, and, and these little other kinds of wetlands are within the same landscapes anyway, so it's not as if we're making huge detours to find them. As we're wandering through extensive heath and bog landscapes, we find little flushes and springs, and some of them some, some of them very small but with uh, a, a very different set of species in them. So um, it's quite a wide range of environments, of habitats, and, and, and a wide range of different plant communities that we encounter while looking here at heaths. What we do, we go out on each of the two days and we wander around looking at uh, a lot of vegetation, um, looking close and um, then looking and seeing how it fits into the landscape, seeing what sorts of um, settings any you know these different plant communities occur in. Um, the range, the total range of heath and mire vegetation types that we see just around here is sufficiently diverse that um, hopefully what people see here can then be related to what they see around other parts of the UK, the, the sort of broad groups that they can learn about, for example, the divisions into dry heath and wet heath and bog and flushes and springs, and acid flushes, neutral flushes, um, base-rich flushes. They've all got their different sets of species, and we find examples of these broad groups all across the UK, with you know, obvious differences between the southern lowlands and the northern uplands, but they have a lot of things in common um, to separate those groups throughout throughout the UK. So what you learn in one area can, in a sense, still be applied in another. Um, that's the, one of the aims of this course, that, uh, that what, well, what we can show people has enough variation and, and enough good examples of the different types here in Perthshire that, um, that, that they can see it in other parts of the country and have a good time seeing lots of interesting species here, including some pretty uncommon ones. So that's a brief summary of the Kindrogan Heaths and Myers NVC course. I'm a botanist and an ecologist working in a consultancy here in Scotland. Uh, and I've been doing the NVC courses uh, Woodlands, Grasslands and Heathlands at Kindrogan. I've done courses at Kindrogan before that were focused on species identification, uh, particularly difficult groups like grasses and sphagnum. And I wanted to take that and put that into a context of the plant communities. Um, the NVC is important in surveying um, for developments and, and so on and I wanted to get a better understanding of the plant communities that I was seeing and to be able to read the landscape better by looking at the species and understanding the assemblages I was seeing and 
what that tells me about the, the soil conditions, the hydrology, the climate, and the, perhaps the land use uh, management, both current and past. Kindrogan it just is in a fantastic setting. It's got such a wide range of habitats around here within easy distance from the mountains all the way down to the sea. And I think it's pretty unique in that respect within the UK. And being on a course with uh, Ben as the tutor has been fantastic. He's got a very relaxed, informal style of teaching, but he really knows his stuff and that gives you a lot of confidence that you're getting the best information because you see a particular range of habitats over the, the couple of days, but he's very good at also relating it to other habitats that you maybe haven't seen, but explaining to you what the similarities would be, where the, where the affinities are within the NVC and how you might recognise other things that you could come across. Um, it's, it's been really good from a confidence-building point of view to feel like you've got a deeper understanding of the habitats that, you, that I've seen on a regular basis and seen the variation but not always understood the variation. And to get that deeper understanding, is, uh, I think, is really cool.